好，谢谢。我先用中文讲一下，讲一下，然后我就转转到那个英文去，因为我我我我普通话还是很很不是不是很好，所以啊。我我这个这个 talk 了，就是用英文准备的。可是如果你有什么不清楚的话，也可以用中文去问我，尝试回答。嗯、um, ，so now I switch to English. Um, so I'm going to tell you about hypothesis. Uh, which is yes, you can tell from the title that it's related to writing test. Um, so oh, actually the link is wrong. I'm sorry. I not really. <laughs> I'll give you a new one later. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, so yeah, uh, this is my contact detail, and um, also I will be on the sign work uh Discord. So if you want to find me, you can find me there as well. Um, so let's look at it. Here, where people were sitting here who write code. You write code. Yay! We have people who write code. I love people who write code. Um, but you write test. Yes, I love people who write tests because you are the nicer people. <laughs> because like sometimes I have to write tests for people. Like,、mm, why?、Oh, okay. Do you write like?、Uh, do you like writing the tests? Oh, okay, okay. I I feel like the the hands are getting less and less, which is a bit concerning. Um. So, I would say that yeah. I I also like well when I was coding, I also have to write tests, but I can't say. For sure, that I love writing tests because writing tests is very difficult. So, what are the difficulties that is like for me to write tests? Is first of all, I have to、uh, import the code. <laughs> so, some you know testing libraries, you have to like make sure that you have the right import, and if you don't write it correctly, then you know before you run the test, it's already wrong. So it's like oh. Where's the? Oh, I I forgot to import the the code that I'm using.、Um, so also organizing the test. So when you write a test for some like huge library, then sometimes it get messy. You you'll be like after a while you forgot where where did I write the test? I remember I write the test. Where do I put it? <laughs> We have like ten files for all all the different tests. It's like okay, where where did I put it? Is it in you know util or is it in you know whatever you name the library? It's like oh okay.、Um, So another thing is to think of what test case to write, right? So sometimes you want to test whether something work, and you have to guess what the input of that function would be, right? So it's like,、mm, maybe someone will input that, or maybe I will receive this from another function. So you have to scratch your head and like take an extra step of thinking, okay, what I should test, or what I need to cover, right? To that's one possibility, which is may not be straightforward all the time. So. Today, I hope to solve some of these problems. I hope to solve at least two of the problem from these three problems. I think I have when I was writing tests. So we will see. Before that, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. So I contribute a lot for open source. I love open source projects.、Um, in, I, so I contribute, including hypothesis.、Um, I also organize a lot of events. So tomorrow there's humble data workshop. And I'm so glad that like we will have humble data workshop in Taiwan for the first time.、Um, so I also you know have run different workshops around the world. I am right now the PSF director and fellow. So if you have questions about the Python Software Foundation, I'm happy to、um, you know talk with you. I'm also my day job is actually、uh, working as a community manager at OpenSSF. So what is OpenSSF? So we are also a nonprofit. So it's、uh, part of Linux Foundation. We focus on open source security. So, if you're using open source software or you're developing open source software, this is very relevant to you. We have free courses, so、um, feel free to click on it.、Uh, again, I will give you the link of this slide later. I just mess up the link of the slide, so I will give you later.、Um, so,、uh, first of all, I would like to introduce you to a new way of writing tests. So,、um, like I said before, writing tests is so hard because we are using Uh, I was a quote traditional way of writing test,、um, but I'm trying to tell you about a new way that you may not try before, is to do property based testing. Okay, what is it? What's what's the difference between just what I do right now writing the test?、Um, so I would say that right now, so like the quote unquote traditional way of writing test, I would say test by example. You have a function or a method you want to test, then you have to think of What test case to use? So you have to think of the example that you want to test. So test by property, you don't necessarily need to do that. You just kind of know how the property of the input should be. What is it? So 
um, you will later see some example of how to test by property, but this is the diff main difference. So like I said, test by example, you have to think of what to test. You have to think of what is the possible input and of course the relevant output of your test case. For test by property is, uh, well, is, I hope it's obvious that like what the input type at least is supposed to be, or like for example, let's say you have a function, you take a positive integer, so you know the kind of the range of what input is supposed to be. It's a positive integer, so it won't be negative, or it's an integer, so it won't be a floating point number. So it's more obvious, like with, because when you write the code, you already kind of have that in mind that what the input is supposed to be. Um, so test by example, you have to take extra step to write the example. So like I said, you know, you know, like what the property of that variable or that input is supposed to be when you write the code. But when you write the test, then you have to take an extra step to think, okay, so positive integer, maybe I will test one. Should I test zero? Should I test zero when I test positive integer? So you have to do all these things, right? But if you test by property, so you just put it, like you just define, oh, okay, I want to test positive integer, that's it. Um, other thing is like a test by example, sometimes you forgot to test some important things. For example, you are not testing positive integer. You're supposed to actually test zero as well. So it's a non-negative integer. So you overlook, oh, I should test the zero as well. And then if someone actually, or in some cases, a zero comes in and then let's say divided by zero and your whole method blows up and ah, because you, you forgot to test this edge case, then some error will come out sooner or later. But if you test by property, if you say, oh, it's not negative integer, uh, if the tool that you're using is correct, for example, like hypothesis, then um, it will automatically reduce the case. So it's like, okay, you should test some very, very fundamental things, for example, zero, because it's not negative and people always forgot zero is <laughs> not negative. Um, then edge case can be automatically found. You don't have to put this like mental energy into thinking what should I test and what is important to test. The hypothesis uh, I've already introduced a few times. So hypothesis is a Python library that you can install and use. It is uh, it provides um, a lot of tools that you can use together with your test um, tool, like for example PyTest or unit test. So um, so you can't use hypothesis itself to test something. You have to use it. I use it a lot with PyTest. So um, so yeah. So it's it's an extra tool. So it's kind of like those extra thing you plug in to help you to write tests better. Um, so what does hypothesis provide? How does hypothesis do the property-based testing? So hypothesis will give you a lot of decorators. So they, um, so, so everybody knows what's decorator, right? Or, or, so like if you see something like this, add something in front of a function, or, then, then that's the decorator. Um, so you use them. So you don't have to understand what is decorator. You just use them like, you know, you follow the example, so it will, um, Put in some, uh, ex, you know, you can modify the test when PyTest run it. It will modify it a little bit so you can do exactly what you want it to do. So it's an entry point to modify the test. So it will do the property based testing. Another important thing that Hypothesis gave give you is the strategies. So you have to use this strategy and put them in the decorator to, because um, it's a very, kind of very uh, important piece of the puzzle when you're using hypothesis. It will generate the test data for you. That's why it's so important. Uh, depending on what the property of your uh, input or your variables are, then you'll use different strategies. You can even make your own strategy. You can combine your own strategy. You know, this thing. So, um, but I won't cover it today because it's a talk. It's not a tutorial. We don't have enough time. But I'll point you to a tutorial later that may help you to answer some questions. So. This is a very basic example of hypothesis. You will find it in the documentation of hypothesis. Um, so this is a very simple function that is, uh, you know, find somewhere online as, you know, another tool is using this example that, okay, we are doing some encoding here. So this function does some encoding. And after that, there's decoding. So there's a pair of functions that supposed to do its job. So um, it works well, kind of, um, but does it really work well? We'll see. Um, the hypothesis is how you use it. Um, you have to import the given, which is the decorator that I mentioned. And then you have to, you, from the strategy 
find the right strategy because we are encoding and decoding some text. So we would import text, which is just assuming that the input will be some text and our hypothesis would handle it automatically. So this is the very important line. So whenever you see a line like this, you probably know that it's a test that's like written using hypothesis. So you use the decorator, so you have the add given, and then inside you put in the test. Uh, remember the bracket because uh, the strategy is uh, is a callable, so you have to call it to generate the data. And then after that, then you you know, um, so you will have a uh, variable there as an input of the test. So s, so s will actually be a text that's generated by hypothesis. So this is how it works. So let's see uh, it in action. Oh, wow, it's good. Is it big enough to get the, 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 the character or is it too small? It's still too small. Make it bigger. It's like look funny. I hope you can see it. Um, so what I have here is I have a, uh, a some some code here. So I have my code. So let's see what is my code. Right. So this is my code, which is exactly what you just saw. Um. So let's use hypothesis to 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 test it. So uh, I actually write some tests for it. So um. So this is. Is it clear enough? So it's just this piece down here. The last few lines, you can see that's exactly the test. Again, it's what you have saw before. So, um, but I have, I have to import the code because it's written in another file. So um, this is, ex I just want to show you this is the same thing. So now I'm using hypothesis. So let's clear it up because okay, let's see. So um, let's run the test. So I use hypothesis together with PyTest. So, yeah, okay, uh, PyTest. Test. Difficult to type with one hand. <laughs> oh, okay, so I use PyTest to run the test file. And there's an error. So actually, this is what I'm expecting because it found a problem that if we have uh, s equals to nothing, then the thing doesn't work. The test doesn't work. So now we have found an edge case for encode because if the input is nothing then it won't work. So uh, this is how the, the, the benefit of using hypothesis because you don't have to think what to test. Sometimes you forgot to test an empty string, which happened to me a lot of times. <laughs> so hypothesis will find that for you and then you don't have to every time it's like, okay, remember to test the empty string. So uh, this is automatic. So it's a good thing that it fails because now you can fix it in your code and then um, the user won't encounter this because you have now found it and fixed it. Let's go back. Here, and um, so it's all good. It's all good. But since now it's sign work, right? So, who use NumPy or pandas? Yes. Well, because we all write scientific code. So one of the two popular, like you know, it's, there's a joke that like, oh, all the data scientists when they sit down and code, the first thing they do is like import NumPy speed, uh, it's, <laughs> import pandas as speed, import uh, NumPy as py, uh, py, and like. Uh, no, uh, NY and NP, so things like that. So it's like, wow, well, it's kind of automatic. Like you have, to have it in your muscle memory. You do that every single time. So um, it would be great if hypothesis kind of helped me to use my favorite NumPy and Pandas. But you ain't luck because hypothesis actually have that to help you. So um, in hypothesis, there's some extra that is created to help people who maybe using scientific things or they are a Django developer, they have, right, uh, you know, they need some extra thing to test the Django app. So I will focus on the scientific track because all of you are using it. <laughs> so first of all, NumPy, so how to use it because it's an extra, so you have to install it with the square bracket NumPy. So this is what you have to remember when you install Hypothesis, make sure you have include NumPy or you can just like, you know, upgrade and then install extra with your hypothesis. So after that, then you have to call it in, right? So what it does is that it will install this extra, NumPy extra into hypothesis that you can, um, uh, that you can use the strategy inside. So, so what strategy is good for NumPy? So uh, these are the scalar strategy and the array type, D type strategy that uh, you may need when you construct your NumPy array because um, you want to test a NumPy array that is kind of, you know, maybe a random 2D array or something like that, or a 2D array with certain size, but you want the contents to be random, then uh, you can use uh, these strategies to help you to generate that uh, NumPy array. 
So details are in the link. I don't think I have time today to cover it. So I'll just let you explore it. Uh, if you have questions, you know, now, today, tomorrow, or later, you can contact me. Um, another very similar thing is pandas. Um, pandas, it doesn't have a square bracket pandas. It's lived together with the NumPy extra, so it's the same way to install it. But it's, um, yeah, but it's like, it's, it's in another folder. So it's kind of like, you know, interesting that you install NumPy and then you found it under the pandas folder. Um, so it provides the PD index, so, you know, uh, uh, a pandas data frame, it has an index, it has the, um, you know, the series, all these things that you could use, take it and use. Uh, you can also generate a data frame, but um, all the details, again, I have a, work I have a workshop <laughs> a tutorial about it, which I will put the link later um, that you could, um, you know, go to the GitHub and try it yourself. So how to, you know, go from building your own strategy into building a pandas data frame yourself. So, um, again, documentation, uh, that's a very good way to look at the details. So now I know that you're like, well, it's very complicated. I just want to be lazy and write, you know, tests without too much effort. Well, if you are a developer or developer or, you know, someone who write code, but also you would write typing because I think nowadays a lot of Python users start using typing. It's become more or less a standard for a lot of coders. So if you're using typing, then you're in luck because you can save time in your tests. Um, so we have something called a ghost writer for, for, for writing tests. I was like, wow, you need a ghost writer for writing tests. Yes, we do have. Um, so uh, when you have a piece of code that have been using typing, so the ghost writer will use your typing as a hint to guess what strategy do you need when you write the test. So you put the strategy, you pick the right strategy and then, um, for the input parameter, so it's automatically done for you. Um, is there's a CRI tool, so you can generate your test file with the CRI. Um, I will show you a little bit later. Uh, another good thing is that it will automatically compile, uh, uh, comply with the black standard. So, uh, who know the the formatter black? Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, so it will match your, your other code style. You don't have to actually, like, you know, after the test was generated, you don't have to be like, okay, now I have to reformat my code. It's automatically done. So it's, it's neat and tidy and easy to read. So, um, so in the command line, it's very simple. So this one is actually using gzip, the standard library, as an example. So you just hypothesis write and then the name of the module, how it works. So, uh, so now you think, okay, so I have the type of the um, parameter sorted, then, you know, the strategy will be picked for me. But how do I test the code, right? You still have to write the test. So in the decorator, let's say, you know, from the typing, I can generate all the different strategy in the decorator. But what about the test itself, right? So it's, it, it's kind of half, only halfway through that, like, the decorator is generated. But what about the test? The test can also be generated using the following strategies. So one of the strategies is just to run the test, uh, run the code. So for example, I want to um, run this compile um, function in RE, and you can just um, you know, use a fuzz to like run it, um, and then just kind of uh, run it with certain parameters to see if it works, and then there's an error, then you will see that, oh, actually, if the type is wrong, the function won't work at all. It will have an error. So it doesn't matter the output, it just won't work. So it will give you an error. Um, other one, in them, in them content, I, I, I still don't know how to pronounce this word. Huh? Adem, so it's, um, so what it means is that, for example, some uh, function or method, it, when, it's, when the job is done, it doesn't matter how many times you call the same function or method, it's, it will stay the same. So one of the example is sorting an array. So when an array is sorted, no matter how many times you keep start sorting it, if, it's short, if you sort it the same way, then it will just stay the same. So this is how you can test whether the function works, because let's say if you sort a function, uh, sort an array multiple times, and every time it changes, right, then, well, it's never get done. So there's probably something's wrong there, right? So um, this is how it, check whether um, this, the sort, sorting function works. 
Another thing's round trip. The very good example is the one I showed you before. The coding and uh, the encoding and decoding is supposed to, you know, cancel each other. So you can check whether if I call encoding and then decoding, whether it go back to what it was. The other example, like you know, the JSON dumps, JSON loads, they should kind of, you know, go back round trip if you call them, uh, you know, uh, one and then another. A equivalent. This is. Useful when you have a function that you know is working for sure, and you check it against another function that you write. This one actually won't work because the one that I write uh, won't work sometimes. But uh, so it probably hypothesis will pick it up and say, "Oh, you actually missed this case." But it's just an example. For example, you write a um, method to uh, to calculate the power of something, and then you can check it against the standard library, the math. Um, I don't know why you do that, but can't think of a way of showing it, but sometimes you want to create another function and check it against another function. And this is a tool that you could use. And there's some more niche ones. Uh, for example, binary operations. If you like have your own write your own binary operations, you can kind of use it. Um, the other one is uh, for the uh, especially for the NumPy array functions, uh, the, the ufunks, you know. But I don't think I would write a ufunk myself. So <laughs> I think it's like. If I don't know when I'm going to use it. Um, so let's have a look of, uh, of it in action. Let's play this. Now, let's, um, let's do, the, uh, do what I want to do. So um, remember, we have the my code file. So how about we write some code for my code? So um, before this is write my code. So Remember to don't put .py there because it's supposed to be the name of the module. So now I'm treating my code .py as a module. So don't put .py there. Um, oh, so the color is very weird. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, usually I use the black as the background, but it's not very good with the projector. But I don't know the coloring is so bad here. Like with this code. So, um, so maybe I can solve this problem by putting it in a file. Then you can see better. You pipe it into um, the test. To dot pi. I don't know how to name things well. So let's have a look at test two. two. So this is the code that generated. So, um, yeah, like like you, I've just shown you, you can put it into a file. Then now you can run this with PyTest. So what it does is that it will know how to import the code, the module, my code, and then uh, it will find the strategy. So it actually can see that oh, I need to have uh, text. So it would no input string, so it would give so it would give it name, input string, because it see the text and it would do the um the test of it. So what it does is that it will do a um, I think it's doing a round trip here. Yeah, it's doing a round trip here. So um yeah, so this is this is uh, the test that's generated. So I don't have to write test of pi because I can just generate it. <laughs> this so, you know when you have done the typing well, well, because I think my code doesn't have some typing here. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't even like type it very well, but it's kind of know that it's like a, the string is actually a text. So it's, it's quite good. Um, I think we have been improving it a lot. We have added more logic in it to make it smarter and smarter. Yes. Yes. Uh, because I think I have looked at the code base, it's kind of guessed it by the name because encode and decode is kind of like a hint. Yeah, so it's it's like yeah, you think, oh yeah, it's AI smart, right? It's like just chat GPT. No, it's something like there's just some logic in it that kind of like, oh, you know, developers are not very creative when naming things, so maybe probably, yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah, so you you can actually add more logic in it, like well, I mean, if the maintainer approved, then yeah, you can have your own logic into the ghostwriter. It's quite it's quite um, smart and stupid at the same time. Um, so, I I well, I'm kind of promoting a hypothesis, uh, but there's a few caveat that I I think is only fair if I tell you at the end. So, a test can actually run a bit slower. And also, for example, if you use Ghostwriter to generate the test, it takes some time to generate the file. Um, now it's fast because I've already run it. There's a cache. But if you run it the first time, it may take maybe a few seconds to one minute. Like, yeah, a few seconds to, to 
to, to, to generate that uh, file. So it's like if you have to generate a lot of things, then it will take some time. So yeah, be careful. Um, so, for example, like sometimes people put in the CI and it's like, oh, why is it so much slower now using hypervisor? Yeah, because it takes time to generate the, the test, generate the test file, or whatever, you know, like, um, so yeah, it would take some time. It's, it's you know, no free lunch. Um, so, tests also can be harder to understand because, you know, you generate it uh, for you, or if you, let's say, you have some work in the team and some of your colleagues are not familiar with property based testing, they'll be like, what is this thing that you're using? Right? So, um, but it will be better if uh, uh, you know hypothesis or property based testing is more familiar than people kind of know that what you're doing you're doing something smart like people is like oh okay okay i got it um uh and then like another thing so i i have already told you like there's some hints there's something but if you kind of like no typing then it's a bit hard for the ghostwriter to guess what the um, what the thing is now like it use some like naming to kind of guess for example i said input strings is like probably a text because it's string but if you just name it randomly like stuff or something like okay what it is and or for example you're encoding decoding you name it something like you know i don't know how you name things like hello kitty and you know and snoopy they're like then what, what is this like i don't know so um so yeah like it's it's smart but not that smart so you, you have to work with it Right. Um, so following up, I have a few things uh, to give you, kind of like homework or something. No, not really. Um, try using property-based testing. Uh, try reading those documentation and see like how you can, you know, use it. And you know, maybe next time when you're writing code, you can, you know, you have to write some tests. Please write tests after you write the code. But you can think, oh, maybe I can use property-based testing. Um, it's hard at the beginning, but actually it's quite fun when you get used to it. It's kind of like solving a puzzle. Um, use hypothesis. I think it's quite a good tool. It's still improving. You try to be smarter. You know, you can help it to become smarter. Um, and also, if you are curious how you can use a hypothesis, uh, the, the strategy to help you to test the data frame, I have another tutorial, which is the link there at my GitHub, so you can go there and check it out. So thank you. Again, the slide's wrong. So I will give you the, the link now. That's the last thing though. The last thing that I do, I think let me quickly give you the link of the slides because I forgot to update it. Right, so this is the link of the slide. I would put it here. And then now you can have the whole slide deck. Okay. Yeah. So this is the link of the slide. Oh, that's the wrong button again. Okay. Thank you very much. And if you want the slide deck, this is the link. <laughs> So thank you very much. Do we have to check slide or anything? So thanks for, sure, uh, for this interesting topic. So does have anyone have a question about this topic? Okay. Uh, actually, I came across a hypothesis uh, maybe a few months ago. And uh, uh, I want to ask if it's possible to generate free data uh, uh, with hypothesis other, other than uh, without using PyTest or, or Unitest. I mean, uh, sometimes I need to uh, look, oh, okay. Uh, why I'm asking it is that, um, for example, I have a function that make requests to a uh, remote uh, API and uh, I make, and I get a response, uh, do some processing, uh, do, do some data, data processing, and return a string, for example, uh, to, to, to my other coroutine. I want to mark like, uh, that functionality for that. And uh, so that's why I need to generate fake data. Uh, I, I would say that actually you, you are on the right track because hypothesis is a generator basically. Um, so you, you can definitely do that. And um, I, I don't know like the data that you generated are um, of any specific because uh, if you go to my tutorial, the link that I showed you with uh, early, uh, one slide earlier, that actually you can generate a NumPy array with, for example, you can add some criteria like whether you want all the uh, numbers to be 
uh, you know, unique or something, you can use those to generate more complex. So I think, yeah, hypothesis may actually help you uh, in, in that. So have a look at that. Um, and also all the strategy, you can kind of um, you can have advanced use of the strategy. You can, you know, even write your own strategy. The difference between the generator of hypothesis and randomly generated is that hypothesis will have some logic to string down the test size. So I don't know whether it's something that you want because um, if you just want some randomly generated sample, then the string down may or may not help you. So again, case by case. But do check out the documentation because hypothesis is not just randomly generated something, but it will also do some logical like shrinking of the, uh, the, the, the test case so that it will benefit the test because it's the tool that is designed for that. But if you just want some randomly sampled data, so if that doesn't work for you, then maybe you have to write your own random generator. Yeah. Thanks. So, and we have a question in our slide though. So this question is, it is a good possible to combine with BBD approach with hypothesis. BBD approach. Um, hmm, that's a very good question because, because I think hypothesis is, because it's a property-based testing, right? It depends on whether the behavior, because I'm not very familiar with like B, BDD because is the behavior kind of matching what the assumption that's made on the uh, on the property, right? So this so, uh, hypothesis is property-based testing. So it's like the assumption is made on the property of the, um, of the input or the variables. So I don't know if the behavior kind of match in that way or is it a totally different thing than, than it won't be that useful. 